Hey everybody, this is Franco, and thanks for watching my last video where I was making some aluminum soft jaws on the Precision Matthews PM25MV. Lots of good comments on that video. There were a few questions, and um, I think I can answer all those questions by kind of lumping them all up into one category, uh, how I do stuff. So this video is going to try to touch on how I how I do some of the things that I do. It's not really a how-to video, it's just general information. So, if you recall, the project here is making some aluminum soft jaws, and this is the uh, first operation complete. I, uh, I use the Centroid CNC control software, and there's a really nice conversational interface in there for programming, and you can do simple things really fast. But Nine times out of ten when I'm writing programs, I prefer to use Fusion, 3, Fusion 360 for milling machines. And that's what I did right here. So here's side one. And you can see the stock defined and you can see the origin. And this is pretty much what we did. And that is what the part looks like. It looks just like the one on the screen, except it's not multicolored. So now we have to flip it over and do side two. So this is the setup for side two. And I can never operate the mouse correctly when I'm filming. But here we go. So on side two, we have to... Uh, take off the stock and finish the rest of the part. And you can see where my origin point is. It's, it's right here. It's this corner of the finished part. And we're basically, we're going we're gonna to rough face, we're going to finish face, we're going to do some chamfering, and then this part's complete. So, I post out the code. using the uh, post processor that I have on my Dropbox location, which you're all welcome to use if you'd like. And that is what the code looks like. And as you can see, it's basically standard EIA G-code format. The, the Centroid Control it basically runs, you know, the same code that any other milling machine would run. It's very, it's very standard. It's very conventional. It's one of the reasons why I like it. So that program is loaded into the Centroid control. And the, the Centroid CNC12 has a really nice back plotter feature. So you can go and, you know, run your code on the screen and and get a pretty good idea of what the toolpath is going to do before you actually make chips. I kind of like that. And that's it right there. So it, it actually is a full CNC uh, program simulator. When it's doing this back plot, it's actually running the program. So if this program is going to alarm out or not run for some reason, this back plotter feature would have told me that. So now that the code is in the control, the next thing that has to happen is I have to, I got to teach my WPC. So when I was doing the first side, it was easy. I was basically working off the raw billet. So I could just throw that in the vise. I could, you know, touch off the edge of my raw billet, you know, uh, make my allowance for the, you know, the stock I was leaving to finish the part. It was, it was easy because I could get to the outside corner. But now, I'm finishing the part, and I want to, uh, I need a touch off of the finished part, right? So when I throw this thing in the vice jaws, you know, when I go to edge find or, or touch off, I, I can't get to the finished part easily because the raw stock is in the way. So what do you do? So what I like to do is use a one, two, three block. So I'll get a one, two, three block, and I'll, I'll get it set up in my, uh, my vise. 
and I'll adjust my stop to where I want my stop to be. So now I can I can clamp on that one, two, three block, and I can touch off of uh, you know X, Y, and Z, and now I know where the origin point is in that vise. And then naturally I have to make a little bit of an adjustment in the Z axis to compensate for the uh, you know the difference in thickness between the one, two, three block and the finished part. And that is you know pretty much the setup. So I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, you know, do that right now. Okay, now that the uh, 123 block is in there, I'm just going to do a little preparatory stuff over here. I'm going to fire off a uh, M6 T01. And cycle start to continue. So now I have tool six or tool one fired up in there. Uh, what I'm going to do now is give it a G zero X zero Y zero. So I just moved my machine. And I am going to give it a, a move right now to uh, activate the tool one offset. I don't really need to do all of this, but it just makes me feel better. Okay, so uh, I didn't have to do all that. I, I just like to do it. It makes me uh, feel more confident what I'm doing. So now it's time to actually touch off uh, Z-axis. So Z-axis is touched off. So now what I'll do is I'll go to Setup, Part, and what it thinks it wants to do is the x-axis, so I'm going to tell it next axis. Now I'm at z. So now I'm going to teach z. So it, it knows I want to teach G54. If I wanted to teach a different WPC, I could change it, you know, with these buttons, but I want G54. I am going to teach this position as 1.005 inches, and I'm going to use tool number one. And why did I pick 1.005? Because right now I, I want the zero to be the top of the parallel. So my, my uh, one, two, three block is one inch thick and my shim is five thou thick. So technically that tool is 1.005 away from Z zero. And that is, that's what I'm teaching right there. And I'm using tool number one, my master tool. So I do all that. I come over here. I press set. And look at that. Now the display says 1.005. That's exactly what I want. All right, now we're gonna do uh, X. All right, now it's time to tell it where X is. And every time I do this, people always ask me, why don't you use edge finders? Um, I don't know, I just, I like doing it with a feeler gauge. If you like using edge finders, use edge finders. I like a feeler gauge. So here we are, G54, I'm gonna set X. Now this is cool, so it gives you this graphic. You have a couple of different ways to do X. And I want to, uh, change it, right? So I'm not finding the center of a slot, so I hit this thing over here. 
I can say approach from right or approach from left. And that is exactly what I'm doing. So they even show a picture of an edge finder on the left side of the part. My part position is going to be X0. And my edge finder diameter is 260. So why did I put 260 in there? Well, here's why. So this is a quarter inch end mill. So that's 250. This is a five thou shim. So you got to double it, right? Because it wants to think in diameter. So five thou on uh, you know times two is ten thou. So 250 plus ten thou is 260. Right? Because um, you know that five thou shim was in there. There's a little little space of about 5 thou between the edge of that end mill and the edge of the X0. So 5 thou, double it, plus the diameter of the tool, you know, 260. And that's what I put in there. And then I come over here and I say set. And boom. It put in negative 130. And what that is is the uh, center of my tool, the center of my spindle, is at negative 130 from X. So you guys are smart. You can, you can kind of like do all the math and, and think about all that, what's going on there. And uh, okay, on to Y. Logically, right, we're going to move on to Y. So we're going back to setup, part. I'm going to say next axis for Y. And I'm going to approach from the front. So I'm on Y axis, I'm approaching from the front. And you can see the picture, right? Looks just like my part. And the same type of thing here. I'm I'm finding Y0, 260 front, and I come up here, press set, and now Y says negative 130, which is half of 260. All right, cool. We're, we're almost set up. I always like to do some uh, double checking of myself. So what I'm going to do is fire off an MDI uh, G0, G54, X0, Y0, and we'll press enter, and then I can give it a cycle start, which I'll do over here from the pendant. And that, what that is, is a sanity check to make sure that we're lined up right, which I would say we are. Now, we have to uh, deal with the z-axis. So let's, let's move on to that step. So I have removed the 1, 2, 3 block, because I don't need that anymore. And over here on my drawing, the part that I'm making is 0.55 thick. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I am going to jog uh, the tool X positive a wee bit. Y positive just a little bit. And, uh, you know, basically I just, I want to get that tool away from those jaws. Now, I'm going to come over here. And I am going to uh, slow my rapid down, first of all. Slow everything down. We'll just put it to uh, 30, 20, 28% just to play it safe. I'm going to go back to MDI. And I am going to give the command, 
I can hit the arrow key to pull up previous commands. So I'm going to do a G0, Z of 0 0.55, G43, H1. So I'll press enter to load the command. Then I'll come over here and I'll press cycle start where you can see the tool move. Okay, so right now that tool, that tool is 0.55 inches away from the top of that parallel. And, you know, right, so you can see the display, it says it's 0.55. And what I like to do is, I, I like to use my scale just to uh, do a double check. So I'll get my, uh, my trusty scale out here. And as best as I can while I'm holding the camera, I will try to scale this so I can see what I'm doing. And... Yeah. So I know this is really hard to see, but but I'm pretty good. And I don't have a free hand to get this to focus, but just trust me, I am uh, I'm where I need to be. Right, so I, my tool, the tip of my tool, is physically in the right spot. So the last thing I want to do now, so I want to, instead of being at a Z of 0.55, I want to go back to setup, part, go to my Z axis, I'm going to tell it you're at Z0, using tool 1, and all I have to do, hopefully, is press set. There we go. My Z0 is, is taut. All right, now I am ready to cut chips. Okay, so the part is in there. It's in the vise, I tapped it down. Both of my parallels are snug. Uh, so I know the part is in there pretty square. We're ready to get started. So I want to put the first tool in the spindle. So I have to take the old, or the master tool out. I don't ever use my master tool to do machining. I only use the master tool for uh, setting up. And that's kind of a centroid thing. Actually, that's, that's a thing for a lot of different... Uh, CNC setups. You can do this, you can do your setups a lot of different ways. You don't actually have to use a master tool, but they describe the master tool method in the centroid documentation. I like it because it will pretty much work on any machine, no matter how the machine's configured. So it's a good way to, good, there's a lot of good reasons to do it. My first tool is going to be uh, tool number three, it's my 3 8 rougher. This tool's already touched off and described in my tool library, so I don't need to measure it or touch it off right now. It's ready to go. Okay, there it is. Uh, Alright, so let's Let's get set up and uh, cut this part. Seeing as I have never run this program before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my centroid pendant in feed rate override mode. So I'm going to use the pendant to actually override the feed rate. And I'm just going to go really slow as I approach the part.
And the way my post is set up, it always has an, uh, has an MO stop at, at the approach. Right now the program thinks that it's one inch, one inch away from the uh, top of the part, right? right? So my program position right now is Z of one inch. So I always like to just eyeball just to make sure it looks right. And according to my eye, it looks right. So I'm going to say I'm ready to proceed. Turn a little air on. Okay, time to let her rip. And hopefully, it's will all cut really well. That's 13 inches a minute. It's cutting great. Cool. Alright, same type of thing. Just gonna 
pop this tool out. I should have thought about that a little bit before I uh, set that up, but that's okay. It worked. Next tool. Alright, I did not bother showing the tool change because I think you guys get the idea. So now let's check out this chamfer mill. Okay. So, one thing I have to watch here is that tool is going to be a, yeah, it should, it should make it. I don't want that chamfer tool to touch my vice jaw. I can see in the program it's going to go to Z of negative 60, uh, so I should have plenty of clearance, I hope. If you're safe about it, I'll turn the feed down and watch it approach. There we go. We're going to be okay.
right, let's check that thing out. And there we are. There's our part. Nothing fancy, it's just a vice jaw, but you know, I need them. And uh, now I have them. So there you go. Hope, uh, hope this video was uh, helped answer a few of your questions. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.